It's like I got it. It's like I got it. Like you know, they they wanna hear. They wanna hear the real shit, right? I've been keeping this shit in for a long time. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I'ma just vent real quick. You know what I'm saying? So y'all. Sometimes it's hard to really like Yo, tell so this is the producer so room powered by Producer Culture. Got a first for the channel today. One of the hottest songwriters in the game, my boy Derek Milano in the building. We're gonna chop it up, up? talk about this crazy money bag yo record Wakisha that he recently landed. Um but man, before we jump into that, I'm kinda interested when I speak to songwriters because it's always interesting to know the moment that it clicked for them that other people were interested in the stuff that they were writing. Um, so wh when did you realize, yo, that people actually really like the stuff I'm laying down and, and they want to hop on it? I mean, really, it really, I had to, I had to start being an artist. I had to start thinking like, okay, what, what, what do I like in certain artists? And like, when I work with certain artists, what do I want to hear from them? So a lot of the times it would just be me just thinking of, hmm, if I can listen to so-and-so today and do something that they never did before, uh, how can I get it to work? So it really clicked in when I just started just trying demos out and um, imitating the artists. And when I would imitate the artist, people would always say like, yo, I ain't gonna lie. This sounds like the artist already. So I was just like, damn, that, that kind of could work. Maybe if I utilize it and put it actually and take it serious and not use it as like a parody, because I feel like a lot of times people will use that and then get on TikTok and try being funny or get on YouTube. So I was just like, you know, I'm gonna take it serious. I'm actually gonna uh, take my talent and put it into uh, demos and songs. So when I started getting placements, it was just like, oh, this is actually working. Like people are actually going to the music and actually I like in the records and A&Rs are already thinking that the artist is on the song already. So that's when it really um, clicked in for me. Started realizing like, okay, I gotta really take it serious. So after that, it's just been on go ever since. Nah, that's fine. How do you balance um, lyrically? Because, like, you take like some of the, like two of uh, the stuff that you've put out. So, like, your "What's Popping" freestyle, and then like a song for "Die for It." Um, like, it shows different layers from like the lyrical side to the more melodic and catchy side. How do you balance that? Because sometimes you can lose the audience if you go too much one way. Um, it's really just understanding like your your like your purpose and like understanding culture. With me is I pay attention, like I, I like to stay in tune on what's going on outside. Like I like to know what's the new hot thing, what's the new lingo people are talking about. So for me, it's always just trying to stay ahead of the game and just understanding balance and just making it where it's, everything kind of ties in together. Like being able to be a rapper, um, it's fun because I'm able to show my, my lyricism and like certain things and like my pockets and flows, but then being able to sing, I'm able to show off my melodies and understand, okay, I could do this with my voice. I can make my voice into an instrument. So I'm able to really just balance both and just kind of make a full, um, just like full work, full bodies of work and just experiment and put it out. I really don't, I really work with no expectations. Like I'm not trying to, when I do a record, I'm not trying to be like, oh, this is going to be the best song ever. I just go in and just try something. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But, you know, I just like to always stay versatile when it comes to creating just because I just know, um, at any point in time, something could go. Mm, it's interesting you say about like being aware of what's going on. And like, I think that extends to like stuff like lingo and like phrases that are, are catching on. Cause it was pretty cool when um, Nas said like real runs on a record and, and like oh, yeah. follow, following the clubhouse journey and, and knowing the origin. Can you speak a bit to that? Cause that was, that was interesting yeah, to me. Sure. Uh, yeah. So shout out to, um, shout out to clubhouse too. Um, they always uh, been in tune with what I had going on. Um, it's definitely a dope app for creators and stuff. And when I was on there, it was a group of people, um, my boy Guy, uh, my boy Billy, and my boy Dirty. They used to have this room called um, Real Runs. And basically it was just pretty girls that had just come in on the app. So every time some girls would come in, they'd be like, oh yeah, bring the runs up, bring the runs up, bring the runs up. So when I got in the studio with Nas, we were working on um, brunch on Sundays and we were just trying to come up with certain lines. And, you know, he's such an amazing artist, like just watching him create and watching him work. We were just shooting ideas at each other. It was dope. Um, we had got to that line. We was like mad blunts, real. We were just trying to think. And I was like, well, you can say the real runs. I said, because not only is it good weed, I said, but in the same breath, it's also like what, we, what a lot of us been calling girls lately. It's like the best of the best. Like, She's real runt. She's out. So he was like, oh, okay. 
I can see it. He, he likes to work off of double entendres anyway. So um, it actually ended up working. And, you know, some people from Clubhouse look at it like, damn, he shot it off real runs. But then people who smoke weed are like, oh, okay, he knows what he's talking about. So <clears throat> it was one of those situations where it was dope and it's just able to kind of just bridge the gap in culture. Um, like that song was just fun in general because I was able to put him on the blast too. Like I was able to like introduce him to who Blast was. He wasn't really familiar. I think he might've heard a few songs, but he didn't know who Blast was. So it was dope to be like, yo, we gotta, you know, give him that cosign. It's a dope look. So that song definitely was like fun to work with culture wise too. Mm, that, that just extends past also what you do because it, it's bringing him into what's going on now. But when you, when you mention artists like Blast, after, after that record came out, man, Blast has been on everybody's record. I know he's on the upcoming Chris Brown record as well. And it's that guy's just leapt up. So how did you identify, you know, this, this guy is going to be next up? Um, me and Blast been cool. Uh, me and Blast been cool for about maybe two and a half, almost two and a half years. Um, Cause he's a producer, you know what I'm saying? He's a producer, he's a writer, he's an artist. So we all kind of know each other. And um, my boy Peru put me onto his music and I was like, yo, this dude is fire. So when I started like getting on Instagram, a lot of my homegirls would go out to eat and they're driving their car. And every time they would get on Instagram, they would do like the little real thing. And they would always say blast at the top. It was always a blast song. So I was like, okay, so clearly he's making music for women, but he's also making music for a certain type of women too. Mm -hmm. So when we were talking about Bunch on Sundays, I'm like, yo, in my eyes, blast is the, that's who, the, that's who the girls is listening to for brunch. You know what I'm saying? Like when they going out to eat and they getting ready and they getting dressed, they turn the blast on. So when I told Nile to say, yo, we're going to do a brunch on Sunday's record, you know, give him the co-sign um, in the song, like shout him out. But then also it'd be dope if you put him in the song and um, Hip Boy and Nas and everybody made that happen. And then when he got on the song, everybody was like, oh shoot, this is like the perfect brunch song mm -hmm. because you got Nas who talks fly to all the women and you got Blast who's talking fly. The beat was fly, so it just all kind of just made sense as one. So I was definitely excited about that. And um, that's another thing that I, like you said, I, I enjoy doing. I like putting stuff together. I like putting artists together. Um, that wasn't like my first rodeo, putting artists with people. I I put Nikki with Meg. Um, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a lot of artists who I like to kind of put together and just kind of give them that vibe to make great music just because I understand creativity and teamwork, so. Um, so when you approach uh, on one of these records, what percentage of them are done like in person with the artists and how, what percentage is like you've made a tune and you think actually this artist would fit nice on it? Well, to be honest, I, I like working with the artists more in person. Um, of course, there's been songs that have been done and I just sent them out, but I feel like they'll get the best um, work, the best quality work, and then everybody will feel a part of the project. The best way is to... Um, is to collaborate so everybody feels like they're a part of it. I don't really like having artists feel like, oh, you did this and you did that and you did that. I like artists to actually feel like they were involved because at the end of the day, they're they're where they are because of what they've done. You know what I'm saying? I just come in and add some sprinkle on the top and just add some more stuff to it. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I don't like artists to not feel like they're not a part of the creative process. So recently, a lot more recently, I've been doing a lot of in session um, in-person uh, collaborations, just because I just like the feel. And I just feel like when it comes down to like moments like this, when we have interviews, the stories sound better than just like, oh yeah, well I sent this song out. It's like, nah, when we did, I don't know, when we did um, like with Pop Smoke, when we did, like she got a thing, we were in the studio together. Like it was like dope, we, we were talking about girls in the strip club and what do girls like and then we had girls pull up to the studio so it was like a experience where we were able to like okay cool we actually kind of like tapped in as a group so it just does so it feels more organic and then like i said everybody just feels involved so so yeah we need the story then behind this money bag yo wakisha record classic sample like such a smooth record when I mean, it went crazy as well um so how did all this came come together yeah, so um, shout out to Bag, man. He um, he had reached out to me in LA and was like, yo, um, pull up to the studio. So I pulled up on him. He was at, uh, I think he was at Paramount. And um, he was like, yo, I got this song that I already did. I already got the hook down. I got some parts of the verse done. He was like, but I'm just trying to get 
a moment. Like I just want to, I just want something that is going to just be catchy that everybody's going to say like, so I was like, okay. So we just sat there together. We was brainstorming with stuff. And then that's how we came together, came like with the uh, part, tastes like candy, sweet like fruit. We came up with, I'm saying, looking at Keisha, like, do you love me? Do you love me not? Mm. So then I was like, yo, on that part, we got to go grab, we got to go find like a cup or something. So went, got a cup, filled it up with some ice, put some whatever in it, and then um, went into the booth and just like shook it. Mm. So then that's when we got the whole, damn, you hit the spot vibe. So it was definitely dope to collaborate with it because it was already, he kind of already had it laid up. So like him coming to me was like, yo, I need that moment. Like, I know that you come up with catchy things. I know that you're one of those people who comes up with stuff that people are going to remember word for word. So um, I appreciated him even bringing me in on that because that part itself is like huge. Like that's, that part was all over TikTok. It was all over Triller. It was all over Instagram. Um, when he performs it, it's like the same result. It doesn't matter if it's six months from now, two days from now, a year from now, if he performs, I'm sitting here looking at Keisha like, do you love me? Do you love me not? You bring the faith of that, you don't get that crowd participation. So um, that's really how that came. That's really how it came about. Like, you know, Bag is a dope artist. He's a dope writer. He knows how to stay in touch with the, um, with the culture and what's going on. So um, even just having him reach out and just knowing who I am was like, it was just dope because it just shows like the influence and the reach of how music is going. So. Mm -hmm. So like that, that's a, quite a specific skill set to have, not just being a songwriter that would be able to fit in the lyrics to a melody, but to also give the track that extra bit of like specialness to go to that next level. What was it that you think Moneybag Yo saw from your previous work to know that that's what you could pr provide? Um, I think it was just a catalog of, of records that I've done. I think, um, I think Gotti might have put him on to who I was. Mm -hmm. um, I think Bearline might have played a role with that as well. And was just like, yo, he just, he stays on top of things. Like he knows what's going on. Because, you know, when, when artists get to a certain level, it's a lot of stuff that they, they kind of miss out on because they're so high up. They're getting so much done. They're touring and doing this, their radio interviews, that they kind of just, kind of just miss about what's going on in real time. So I like to balance it where I'm still paying attention to what's going on, but I also pay attention in real time so the music becomes relatable. It's not saying stuff that people are like, oh, I don't, I don't get what he's saying. Like, I don't understand what this means. It gives people the sense of, okay, he's speaking to us. We know what he's talking about. So it was that, it was a good balance for sure. Mm. Do, you, do you ever have it where like your, your heart is really set on something, but the artist is not really feeling it? How, how do you approach like, pushing it and when do you know the line to actually just drop it now they, they're probably not gonna gravitate towards it um it definitely happens um but i let the artist do what the artist wants to do i don't really like to argue like I, i'll say something maybe once or twice and um they either going or they're not you know what i'm saying but i'm not gonna press the issue because at the end of the day that's their work so it's like if you mm -hmm. don't want to put it out you don't have to. Um, I do know people who are like, no, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. But I'm, I'm cool. Though, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, all right, well, shoot. Maybe we'll try something else or maybe you'll revisit it later. Because um, I've realized that a lot of the records that I do are timeless. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's records that I've cut um, that people hit me up two years ago. of like, yo, did you remember when you did this? Is this available? And I'm like, yeah, like <laughs> it's for sure available. You know what I'm saying? But it's like one of those things where it's like, I forgot about the song, but clearly it still makes sense because if you're asking me about it two years from two years ago, it's still relevant right now. So, mm. Is that something that you're thinking about when you're making the record, like the longevity, or do you think your natural style is that ill age well anyway? Um, nah, I just, I just like making music, you know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't like me. So it's like, if I'm gonna work on something, I'm gonna like take my time in it. I'm gonna make sure that it sounds right before I even send it off because I do want something that, that lasts, but I don't want something that's just here today and gone tomorrow. Like when, like I wanna build a legacy. Like I want people to go to my catalog and be like, oh damn, I didn't know he did this. Oh, I didn't know he did this. I didn't know he do this. Cause the people I look up to, the Neos, the Dreams, the Sean Garrett's, the Jonte Austin's, the Lil Ronnie's, Brian Michael Cox, like, when you look at their bodies of work, it's just like nonstop, like, oh, 
Wow. So I, I kind of want the same thing um, for me as well. You know what I'm saying? So I really take, um, I take my work serious all the time just to make sure that everything is A1 before I put it out and send it out. Back to the Money Bag Yo record. Um, can you give us a bit of a timeline? So how long from him calling you were you in the studio with him? And then how long did it take you guys to finish off the record? Mm, maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours. It, it wasn't that long because we're both creative. So it was like, all right, cool, 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 cool. It was like back to back to back. So it was a it was an easy process. I think it was more of when the song was going to come out um, because I think that day we did two records. I think that day we did Time Today and we did Waikisha. Mm. So mm. it was more, it was more of like the vibe of what was going on. Like we just knew like, okay, we gonna, we got a vibe on, like we getting stuff done. So it just made sense. And then how long was it from uh, the session to when it actually did drop? Maybe like three months, maybe three, four months. Okay. Okay. So obviously this is not your first big record and, and you've had some like crazy releases. Do you still get excited on release day when, when a song like this drops? Do you, do you celebrate or is it just onto the next? Um, I celebrate to myself. I don't really do too much like partying with it. I just feel like, um, it's like, cool. What's next? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just like, and I don't like looking at the stats either. Like if a song comes out, cause before I would look, I would like to see what it's doing on Apple music. What's it doing? How many streams, how many views? But like now I'm just like, yo, just put the music out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if it, if it goes viral behind closed doors and it just pops up and people are like, yo, did you know this song went crazy? Did you know this song went crazy? It's like, oh shoot. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know. Cause I don't, I like to be, I like to be surprised. I don't really, I'm like kind of past the phase of just, doing research on certain things i'd rather people just hit me up and be like yo did you know that this happened and they're just like oh shoot nah but thank you for telling me like i don't i don't want to just watch the internet for um especially releases i just feel like that kind of messes you up because you're trying to compare it to other songs that you've done prior so mm -hmm. i just like letting stuff just organically go and do its thing and then if it if it goes it goes if it's good enough it's good enough but you know i just i'm just grateful for the fact that i'm able to um, you know, help a lot of my peers with records and being 28, I look at the longevity of certain things. I'm like, okay, cool. If I'm doing this now. What is it going to be like when I'm 38? What's it going to be mm -hmm. like when I'm 40? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm really just, I, I, I personally feel like I'm just getting started. I mean, people might think that, um, oh, he's accomplished so much in this short period of time, but it's like, nah, not really, because I haven't really signed my own artist yet. Um, I haven't really, I got in with certain artists that I really want to get in with yet. Um, there's certain genres of music that I haven't tapped into that space yet that I really want to get involved with. Like I haven't really done no pop music yet. So it's like a lot of stuff that I'm pacing myself for. Um, I don't even really do interviews like that. Like this is like probably maybe one of the few that I've done. Um, just because I just like having that, like, if you know, you know, I, that's why when, like when we chopped it up, I think. I think this is going to be a dope interview because a lot of people probably don't know that I was behind Waikisha. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's dope for people to find out because it adds some type of shock value. It's like, oh shoot, I didn't know that this whole time I've been singing this song. You know, he had he had um, something to do. He played a part in it. So um, I just love the fact that I'm that I'm just involved in music in the music industry. Man, it's definitely a blessing for sure. Yeah, it's it comes across to me that you, you genuinely love it and you're just like engrossed in like every part of the music and you don't let a lot of the extra stuff kind of distract you um where did that love for music come from or was it hard to pinpoint um i think it was more i just i just appreciate music and then i feel like doubts too like i feel like a lot of people you know i mean people say all the time but i be i really be feeling like people be trying to like count you out like you know what i'm saying so i feel like when I do something, it's like, oh, can he be? Oh, can he do this? Can he do this? So for me, it's like, like you, you're probably gonna run out of fingers, like trying to count me out mm. because it's like I, I literally record all the time. Like I, I wake up, record, go to sleep, wake up, record. I'm going constantly going through beats. I'm constantly hitting up artists. I'm constantly finding new artists. I'm constantly working with producers. So when you have that type of hunger, it just don't stop. You know mm. what I'm saying? And you don't know what you're gonna get out of it because everything's different. There's artists that I'm working with right now who people might not know who are going to be huge that I've been working with. 
You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm excited about that type of stuff because it's like I'm just 10 steps ahead on what everybody else thinks. I'm not really chasing like the clout and like the big placements and all that stuff no more. I'm more in love with the music and the results that's coming from these artists and you know being a part of their life and their um and their journey in this music industry. So I'm sure being the position that you are now, a lot of songwriters come up to you and probably like want to show you demos and show you stuff. What do you think is the big thing that a lot of songwriters go wrong with and like stops them like from their music standpoint from getting to that ex- next level? Um, I don't really think they run into problems. I think it's more of um, just not having resources. I feel mm-hmm. like we're in a space now. I mean, growing up, we had MySpace, we had Lime Link, Hawk Share, we had Audio Max, Ben Rilla, that Piff, my mixtapes, live mixtapes. So we were able to showcase music and put stuff out um, rapidly. Like, oh, this might be heard. This might be heard. But that's why I um, I created this. I created this Discord. I feel like I get hit up all the time about yo, check out my music, check out this, check out that. And I was like, you know, we don't. If um, I make a space and create a space for creatives to be creative. And here we are. We got the songwriters are us. You know what I'm saying? It's almost Crazy. a thousand, members, almost a thousand members in here. Um, as you can see, we have different categories, and like all day, artists are able to um, to connect with other artists. I'll go in there and I'll drop ideas like, "Yo, this is the samples that I'm looking for," mm. and then I get real time response from. Um, all the producers like yo, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on it. So like when I do stuff like that, it just it just shows um, it just shows how much of a uh, like how humble I am and how much I give back to music um, because I I know how it feels, you know what I'm saying? Like to feel like somebody spamming you. So I was like, okay, if we're gonna spam each other, let's spam each other. Mm. Let's not spam publicly where people are getting annoyed. If we're gonna spam each other, let's all be spamming. But let's all make sure that the music quality is coming out dope. And let's make sure that we all create it as a group. So, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like an underground culture. Because mm-hmm. there's no outlet now. I don't know how people are really, especially songwriters. I don't know how songwriters are getting themselves out there. Like, I had to self-promote. I had to self-promote myself um, this whole time. Like, I didn't, like, I, I can show you this real quick. I remember when I first got into, um, into writing, I was like, damn, how am I going to get, uh, like, how am I going to get myself heard? Like, how are people going to know who I am and what I've done? And I remember I had, this was like the first, I, I made this myself. Like, it was wow. super cheesy. It was super cheesy, but it was like, okay, cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? I had to figure out how to market myself because I never really had no PR or nothing. So I wanted to make, I wanted to make my brand bigger than the songs that I wrote. Mm. I want people to like know who I am. I study people like Hitmaker who understands how to do both. So um, yeah, man, I just when it comes to it, I just I just it just keeps me going just because I just love I just love progression. That so. that's fire. But yo, yeah, you, you heard it here. Jump in that Discord, shout out the produce culture family, and yo, shoot your shot, man. Like this it seems like a great little community, well, big community that you're setting up, man. And um, yeah, fair play for giving back to the community. Um, that's dope. Yeah, but, man, uh, man, I appreciate it, bro, for real. Man, we, we appreciate you taking the time to speak with us, breaking down the record, just giving us loads of gems from like the point of a songwriter as well. We definitely need to get more songwriters on the channel to kind of give us um, more insight behind, behind the scenes. And definitely we're going to have you on the channel again soon. Uh, I know it, but um, yeah, bro, thank, thanks a lot. Yo, I appreciate you, Shai. Yo, shout out to Producer Culture too, man. Like, what y'all doing is super dope. Um, even shedding the light on songwriters because a lot of people don't. Um, I definitely appreciate the love and support. Um, and like I said, I mean, shoot, I'm pretty sure next time they're going to be interviewing you because your music is fire. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate y'all for sure. Nah, that's love, man. But yeah, this has been the producer room, powered by Producer Culture, the big goat in the building, Derek Milano. And we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Appreciate it.